Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the James D. Julia Auction House up in Maine, taking a look at some of the guns that are coming up for sale in March of 2015. I found this one in the catalog, and you know what? It's pretty beat up. The finish on it's in pretty bad shape, and frankly that's a sign that it is what it's purported to be. And what it's purported to be has a really cool story behind it. But let me start with what this gun is mechanically. This is an 1895 Winchester Lee Navy rifle. Uh, when the US government decided to start getting rid of the trapdoor Springfield and replace it with something actually modern, the Army did a bunch of testing and ended up adopting the Krag Jorgensen rifle. The Navy wasn't really that enthusiastic about the Krag. They wanted something that would have a very flat trajectory, that would have a fairly long effective range, and they wanted something that had really good penetration. Because what they were looking at from a naval perspective was using these rifles on things like little incoming torpedo boats trying to protect their larger ships. They wanted something that could actually penetrate more armor than the 3040 Krag was capable of. So they put out a contract to Winchester, and Winchester came up with what is actually the first small bore rifle adopted by the US military. These are chambered for the 6mm Lee Navy, also known as the 236 Lee Navy. Um, pretty small, pretty fast bullet. It was a 112 grain bullet going about 2650 feet per second. And if you consider that this is 1895, less than 10 years after the invention of smokeless powder, that's quite impressive performance. Now, to use that cartridge, the Navy adopted this rifle designed by the same guy who designed the Lee Enfield. What he came up with was functionally a straight pull action. It's actually not quite straight, it's a camming action. And what you do at first with the bolt is unlock it, lift it up, and then you can cycle it backward. And then, nice little jerk to it, locks back into, into battery, locking lug back here. Pretty effective rifle, pretty uh, fast to operate once you got used to them. They use this interesting combination of sort of a manlicker and sort of a Mauser clip. You would actually load the entire clip into the rifle and then the clip would immediately drop out the bottom. So fast to load, really potentially a lot going for this rifle. Now it saw service in a number of theaters. Uh, these were used in the Philippines. They were used in the Spanish-American War. They were used uh, in China by a group of uh, Shanghai Marines in the, during the Boxer Rebellion. So they served reasonably well, but the Navy wasn't all that thrilled with them in practice. They had ordered 10,000. They got all 10,000 delivered by the end of 1897, but by 1900 they were starting to look at replacing this with the Krag Jorgensen and standardizing on the same thing that the Army had. So these didn't see service very long. Now being a Navy rifle, they were issued to Marines, for one, and they were also issued to ships, uh, you know, shipboard arsenals. 16 or 17 different ships got batches of Lee Navy rifles, and one of them happens to have been the USS Maine. Now if you think back to your high school history classes, you may remember uh, one of those slogans from American history of, remember the Maine. Well, in 1898, the Maine was anchored in Havana Harbor, Cuba, and out of nowhere blew up and sank. Killed a lot of sailors, there was no good explanation, and the explanation that was offered was that it must have been torpedoed, or mined, or sabotaged, or otherwise insidiously destroyed by the Spanish government. And this was a major part in uh, the, the series of events that would lead to the beginning of the Spanish-American War. Well, this rifle happens to be one of the ones that was actually issued to the USS Maine. After the ship sank, and it only sank in about 40 feet of water, so pretty shallow. A lot of the guns and some of the other material were recovered off of it. And the US government actually ended up selling those rifles, along with other Lee navies, as surplus when they got rid of the guns. A company called Bannerman, which was kind of like the century international arms of the 19th and 20th centuries, they did a lot of, of dealing in surplus arms, little manufacturing, this and that. Well, Bannerman's bought up a whole bunch of surplus Lee navies, including a whole batch that were recovered from the main. This one happens to be serial number 8808, which is traceable back through Bannerman's catalog as one of the guns that was sold specifically, and they made note of this because it was an interesting and valuable provenance, one of the guns that was recovered from the main and resold. So that explains why the, the finish on this rifle is in pretty poor condition. Well, it spent a bunch of time underwater, in salt water, in the Gulf of Havana, or the, the Havana Bay. I wouldn't recommend shooting this rifle, but it's a really cool piece of American history. 
Uh, now, it's interesting that a few years later, by 1910, there were still some questions of why exactly the main sank. And frankly, there's pretty good evidence that it was probably just actually an accident with a boiler that exploded. Um, and the, the incident was used fortuitously by folks who wanted to go to war as a good reason to provoke a war. At any rate, in 1910, uh, there were some of those questions. And frankly, there was also the notion that there were a bunch of deceased American Navy servicemen still on the ship. And on more practical terms, it was actually kind of a navigation hazard to the Havana Harbor. So Congress actually authorized the money to completely salvage the ship. Uh, U.S. Corps of Engineers built up a coffer dam, like 350 feet by 150 feet, surrounding the entire wreck. They pumped all the water out of it, and they then used some heavy machinery, salvaged, cut off, and uh, removed the top half of the ship, basically. And then they were able to float the hull up as they raised the water level back inside this coffer dam. And uh, there are bits and pieces of the main all over the country in a variety of, of parks and memorial areas and, and in Cuba as well. Big chunks of it stayed in Cuba. Um, the, the remains of the U.S. sailors that were able to be uh, recovered were all recovered and brought back and buried in the U.S. But uh, now that happened many years after these rifles were salvaged. But it's an interesting end to the story of the USS Maine. At any rate, this rifle is available for sale here at Julia. It's a really cool opportunity to get one of only a couple dozen rifles that actually have this documented provenance back to the USS Maine. So if you'd like to add something like this to your own collection, um, take a look at the link below. That'll take you to Julia's auction catalog where you can take a look at their high resolution pictures, uh, their description, everything you need to know to uh, get yourself set up with an account. Place a bid or come down here to Maine and take a look at it yourself. Thanks for watching.